I'm out here on a hunger strike because I live in a city that doesn't respect me or my children because of the color of our skin or because of our income. We're fighting for the last open enrollment neighborhood high school in our neighborhood. And if we don't get diet, my daughter will travel 16 miles to a quality neighborhood high school. That's not bad parenting. That's not her as a bad student. That's in a city and a district that doesn't see us as human. People in Lincoln Park, parents in High Park, which is steps away from where I live, uh -huh. don't have to go miles and miles for a quality neighborhood high school. Why am I? When the Board of Education decided to make King a selective enrollment school, they had just totally forgotten about the children who would attend in the neighborhood King College Prep. Um, King High School, they forgot about those students that they would no longer be able to go to King. And so where were they going to go? The board didn't realize that they didn't have a school for those children to go to for three months prior to school opening. So at the last minute, three months, two months before school started, they said, oh, we got to send these neighborhood kids somewhere. Let's send them to Diet. And so they sent them to Diet. Diet was a a, um, elementary school, a high middle school, a middle school, and so in a day's notice, they just made it a high school, which was the beginning of the destabilization of the school. Then they ended up closing or changing Inglewood High School and sent all those children over there. So and when Diet became a high school, it only had seven books in the library. It was a receiving school for school closings, without the district giving a, a extra dime to the school and so at that time brother G2 was on the local school council and he organized the, the local school council to make sure the students got books that they had programs like life after diet and that they they were part of voice they had a kick butt restorative justice um, program that the city was bringing CPS was bringing people in to see you know how the well the school was doing the students here want an ESPN grant, and I want people to know, a $5 million grant where they were given a new gym, a new weight room, a new swim room, and football equipment because these young people were doing so well. And the district response with them was to close it. Hmm. At that very same time, Daya was reaching out and having a plan, which is the, uh, was the Bronzeville Global um, Village, which it would connect Diet and five of its feeder schools to diet, allowing young people to see what a high school experience was about. And so young people from Mollison, young people from Price before it closed, young people from Revis, young people from Fuller, seventh and eighth graders were bought to diet to get the high school experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of times parents um, are confused about what the high school experience is. A lot of times young people don't know what to expect. And so if you bring them in seventh and eighth grade and give you the experience, you, you kill the dropout rate which is something that CPS should have came up with, but it was teachers, parents, and community members who came up with it. So in the middle of us building diet for the school that it used to be a school of distinction, CPS was response was to close. And so we've had a number of town hall meetings. We've got a number of parents to say, if you could dream, what would you want a school to look like? And you got diet, global leadership, and green technology. The coalition to revitalize diet is not just the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. It's the DuSable Museum, it's Blacks and Greens, it's Chicago Botanical Garden, it's um, Chicago Teachers Union, it's Timberville Black, it's Chicago Quest Center, it's a bunch of different organizations. And also UIC College of Ed, who also was in infinite in having the Little Village School. Mm -hmm. And so this is not, we, we got all the best people in the city together to come up with this plan. And instead of rewarding parents for doing CPS's job, we're sitting out here on, on the third day of a hunger strike. And what was CPS's reason for closing diet? What, what did they say? Or Underperforming and under-enrollment. But you say underperforming and under-enrollment for a school that you gutted out. Diets last year, the phase-out was supposed to have 35 students. The story they don't tell is that Chicago Public Schools and their parent community engagement were calling students and telling students, diet will be closed, don't come back. And so the young people came and said, hey, I want to finish my last year at diet. Those young people take art online, they took gym online. They were only given prom and gym because the coalition pushed the, pushed the district, pushed Alderman Wilburns, pushed Chicago Public Schools, 
push Rahm Emanuel to say, hey, this was not something the students created. They should have an experience at their senior year like everybody else. To the point these young people had to go be part of basketball teams and football teams at other schools because this didn't provide it. If CPS wanted to do right, if Ron wanted to go with his promise of, I've got to listen to the community, I'm going to do better at listening, this is where you start right here and right now. Give us Diet Global Leadership and Green Technology. Mm -hmm. So I'm fighting because we want the Diet Global Leadership in Green Technology High School and we're going to continue to be on the hunger strike until the Board of Education gives it to us. So people need to know that folk in this community, I'm talking to the people in this community, we're fighting, we want you to help us fight for this school. They can call the Board of Education, they can call the mayor's office um, um, and just support. Um, just just by coming out, they can call the offices and let them know that we want Diet Global Leadership Green Technology High School, period.